What's up everyone, it's Anasa here and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Sig Sauer K320 and this is made by Hogue. So this is a knife that I've probably had for a while, I think I got it in around the April time. So I just haven't really came around to doing a review on it, but I have carried it a lot during that time. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do my review on it. Haven't posted in a while, so I figured I could make a video on this. Basic rundown of this knife, made in America by Hogue. It's got an S30V blade, kind of like a polymer handle with like stippling kind of um, for grip. It's got an axis lock or Hogue's version of the axis lock, four ray reversible pocket clip, so it's completely ambidextrous. This will run you about, man, I should have looked at the price. I think it was around that 150 mark maybe even a little cheaper, um, like 130 or something. And made in the USA, all that good stuff. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the review. So first for this blade, um, S30V is a steel that used to be known as one of the best all around steels. Used to be the main steel of choice for companies like Benchmade and Spyderco. And a lot of people loved it. I still really like it. Still think it's one of the best steels. It does get more hate though, because it isn't as cool it's not as new um, but it holds a great edge i really like sharpening it i prefer sharpening s30v over s35 v end and yeah i well done s30v is just as good as anything i mean not really but it works just fine i really like it and i feel like with a steel the main thing i care about is how easy it is to maintain and sharpen stuff like that um, because I don't really care if a steel can cut 300 feet worth of cardboard before going dull versus 400 feet. I'm never going to test it. I'm never even going to really notice that difference. Um, but I will notice a difference if I have to take an hour to sharpen a knife that's in like soft M390 rather than 10 minutes or something for a well done knife. Also, um, edge geometry on this, it's around that 20 thousandths mark, I believe. Don't have my calipers with me. Um, but it seems plenty thin behind the edge. What I like to be thinner always. I'm a big advocate for thin geometry behind the edge. Um, but you know, it's not like it's unusable in any way. I really still enjoy using it. Still does a good job cutting. It's got a tall grind here, tall blade in this dimension. Um, so no problems passing the materials. Let me do like a size comparison here. All right, I need to get this centered on the screen or at least try to. So I don't really have a bunch of my knives with me, but here is a Spyderco Sage. And there also might be a little bit of a illusion on how big these knives are based on the way the camera is. So there's a Sage on the bottom, Spidey Chef on top. And then I also have Spyderco Police 4. So this is that good range size knife. Um, full size everyday carry knife, knives that I look to buy. So yeah, I really like the size of it. Um, and I believe if you carry PM2, Grip Tillion, Sabenza, 940, this is going to feel just fine um, carrying. So this is my go-to size knife. And I don't really carry multiple knives. Some people like to carry a big knife and a little knife. I usually just carry one knife. Um, and so yeah, this is my go-to. Anything more about the blade that I missed? So I talked about edge geometry, pretty good. Uh, heat treat, steel feels good. Sharpening feels good. There is this plunge grind here. Don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera, but it just kind of has a weird termination, if you wanna call it that, um, towards the sharpening choil, or like in the sharpening choil area. Just kind of like dies down. It hasn't been an issue in sharpening, um, but I almost wish they did this thing with the finger choil where they gave you a finger choil included with the part of this blade, but then did this another hump and then went into the edge, kind of like Strider does, except Strider does this and then cuts the choil, so they're really wasting a lot of blade length. This, I almost wish they would have just gone from the blade into the choil, kind of like Hinderer does. Um, but still, sometimes you run into issues with that being too small and then your finger is kind of touching the edge of the knife. So if they want to play it safe, this is fine. And I can maybe see if you like scuffing this up when sharpening and that wouldn't be very fun because it's 
a DLC coding or I, I don't know if Hogue does DLC. Not sure what the coding is. I assume it's probably a Cerakote, but if you know, let me know in the comments. And yeah, overall, Troil, it looks a little bit iffy. Maybe it'll be an issue in the next sharpenings, but hasn't been an issue so far. I guess we can move on now to the fit and finish of this. So the centering, once again, don't know if this is gonna show up. I'm not in my normal camera setup. I've videoed from this same place before. I'm sure you guys can tell this is not normal. Sorry if the lights are kind of harsh and then kind of dark in some areas. Um, and the production probably isn't as good. And also I'm kind of rusty on making videos. So apologize for that. But yeah, the centering is good. Um, blade play, no side to side, no up and down. Overall, very good fit and finish, very well done um, by Hogue. The inside of this FRN is not sharp, which is nice. Um, the, and also back here, not sharp. So something that Benchmade usually gets wrong, uh, they have sharp FRN, Spyderco does it good amount too. Hogue did a good job with it. The finishing on this handle is kind of like a stippling, like you feel on like a Glock or something, um, like on the polymer handle, but it's good. I like it. It's cool. You know, six hours making the knife. So if they want to incorporate something like that, I like it. Um, or six hours not making it, they're licensing it. Um, the pocket clip, it sits on a little smoothed out part on here. Um, it still is a rough smoothed out part, but slides in and out of the pocket good. You have that deep carry if you want, uh, or if you like that. Personally, I prefer a non-deep carry clip. Some people go deep carry on everything. I just like a little bit knife, like a little bit of knife to grab onto. And I don't live in a place where um, I feel like I need to conceal my knives and people are going to be scared of them or try and take them out of my pocket or something. So yeah. I don't really care about a deep carry clip, but this clip works pretty good. These little grooves right here, I think are for if you're in a tactical situation, you'd reach in your pocket, your hands would be sweaty because your adrenaline's pumping as you're about to get stabbed by some guy on the street and you pull it out, your sweaty hand grips the grooves on the pocket clip and you're able to pull the knife out with your thumb on the stippling, flick it open, and then enter full superhero mode and kill them. Or you could just be the reasonable human being and try and run away or carry a better self-defense weapon other than a three and a half inch pocket knife. But you know, you know, we, we don't like to do that. Okay, I'm just gonna move on. Um, that's it for fit and finish onto the ergonomics. Ergonomics on this knife are great. So it's got, it feels like a spider co in hand, feels like a Manix kind of, um, this forward finger choil, I really like it, super comfortable. You can get behind the edge really close to what you're cutting right here, good grip. Never feel like it's gonna come out of my hand. Jimping is not too sharp, it's still there though. Um, holding it back like this, I don't really do it much because I am pretty far away from the blade, but that's comfortable too. Um, pinch grip, that's also one I use a lot. Um, really and really nice with these knives the finger choils. Yeah overall great ergonomics on this thing For the ooh, For the carry of it. I already kind of touched on a pocket clip a little bit um, But it's lightweight doesn't take up an absurd amount of space in the pocket and gets the job done I'm never really a complainer when it comes to the carry of knives um, most of the time unless their pocket clip is way too tight or it's like 10 ounces i'll have a problem with it but you know this is fine gets the job done really like carrying it um for the action of it the action is really good i'm not also not someone who really cares about the action that much um but this one it opens good closes good and that's all you can ask for i guess my one complaint with it is this thumb hole is not the best shape or i don't know if it's the best shape but maybe with the coating maybe they knocked it down at the factory it does not flick, want to flick out sometimes. Like it kind of kept getting, it took some getting used to. When I got it, I was kind of like that every time I opened it. There just isn't much um, sharpness to the finger hole. So yeah, it is what it is. Um, it flicks out. I feel like it's almost made more for the reverse flick because um, that works better with it. 
but I mainly use the thumb flick or the thumb roll when I open a knife with a thumb hole. And Spyderco, I mean, a lot of people praise Spyderco a lot because they get their thumb holes right most of the time, and that is because they do a good job with them. The only thing is they have this huge blade sticking out up here, especially on the PM2, because they make the size of it taller this way so they can have a big thumb hole that's easy to use also one thing spider Co. does is they make a longer distance i think they have like a set measurement on the distance between the pivot and the thumb hole and the longer the distance i guess the more what is it torque you can get on the blade being able to open it easier this one it's pretty good too but you know one cool thing that spider Co. does um, but this doesn't sacrifice the design of the blade for the thumb hole. That's what I should have said earlier. Um, Spyderco does that a lot. This one, I almost feel like a thumb stud would have suited it better. Um, kind of like the thumb stud on the DECA, which is kind of like the axis lock here, how that feels. I think that would be cool to see on this knife. Um, but, you know, a bunch of people like thumb holes over thumb studs, but I'm more of a studs guy myself. But overall, I think that's going to about do it for the main categories I'm going to go over. I guess value. Um, for me, value is a topic that I usually buy the knife. And then if I'm happy with it, it doesn't, the value isn't that much of a deal. I've never really bought a knife for 150 bucks and been like, man, if this is 120 bucks, I'd love it. But I hate it at 150 bucks. That's not really how I think. Um, like, for example, Spyderco, uh, what is it? Dragonfly. I have the K391, that's like a hundred bucks, um, which is pretty expensive for that small of a knife, but I've carried a lot, used it a lot, and I really don't care that it's that expensive. I just probably wouldn't recommend it. So what, is this knife at a value that I'd recommend? Yes, I actually don't say this much in my reviews, um, but if this is that $150 price range, which I, I'm thinking it might be cheaper, I don't know. I'll have a link in the description to it, but that is really good. That's something I could re recommend. Um, especially made in America. This, the Hogue Ritter, Hogue is just a company that is doing a lot of great work for a great price range. People are probably going to be like, oh, I'll make it in Magna Cut, make it in carbon fiber, and then they're going to be like, come on, 300 bucks. Like, I'm really happy with these kinds of knives. I think that a lot of times the materials don't make that much of a difference. It's the thing like the lockup, the blade geometry, the heat treatment, the ergonomics that do the job, and then the materials like a nicer blade steel or a nicer handle, a nicer handle material could just be the icing on the cake to it. Um, and overall, it is the bare bones design that makes a knife good. But yeah, overall, great value. Really like this knife. Hoag's a company. I've said this many times on the channel before. They're a company that I've always had my eye on. I think they're doing some of the best work in the knife industry at the moment. They're kind of like Benchmade, but cheaper and better on quality control. And they're made in America, so I'm going to buy a lot of their stuff. And it's just different. In a world full of frame lock flippers and M390 made from Riot, Hogue is making some S30V polymer SIG Sour collab and Axis locks. That is pretty cool. So yeah, that's all I got to say for the video. I guess I never touched on the coating other than I think it's Cerakote. It's hold up, it holds up pretty. It has held up pretty well. Um, I don't really clean it off, so if you see marks, those aren't permanent. They're just like cardboard residue, um, which I don't even see them very well. Um, but coatings kind of do that. Like after you cut up a box, it looks like you've abused it for three years, and then you wipe it off with like rubbing alcohol, and it looks brand new. Um, so that's why I'm not really that big of a fan of coatings, but honestly, I don't really care that much. Um, so yeah. That's all I got for today. I'm glad to be doing a video again. It's been a while since I've done one. Um, I've said I am living in a different situation now than I was in the summer. So videos are not going to be as uh, consistent. Like I don't think I've posted in two months. And I just am not going to be getting as many more knives. So maybe I'll do more discussion things. Maybe I just won't post as much which is what i've been doing so yeah that's all i got for today thank you guys for watching sorry about the whole production of this not being too great but that's all i got um have a nice day